Isabella Bonfrey, Sojourner Truth, was a prominent woman during the antebellum period due to her acts as an abolitionist and women's rights activist. She paved the way for many African Americans as they fought for their civil rights. Using her first-hand experience, she became a traveling preacher, where she found both praise and criticism. Not only was she black, but she was also a woman, causing her and African American women like her to face extreme discrimination. Truth faced burdens white women weren't forced to face, and in her fight for a suffrage movement, she had to interact with reluctant white women who didn't want to be linked to anti-slavery causes, which they believed Truth represented. Sojourner Truth was born to slavery in Ulster County, New York, and worked for Colonel Hardenberg along with her 12 siblings and parent, James and Elizabeth Bonfrey. Her estimated date of birth was in 1797. When her master died, she was sold to many different owners, some of which abused her, and was once even sold along with a flock of sheep. She finally ended up with John Dumont. In 1815, she fell in love with a slave named Robert and had a daughter, but their relationship was forbidden by Robert's owner. In 1817, Sojourner's master encouraged her to marry a slave named Thomas, and together they had three children, Peter, Elizabeth, and Sophia. In 1827, the state of New York abolished slavery and emancipated all slaves in the state. John Dumont refused to give her up, insisting that she still owed him work. Sojourner escaped with her infant daughter and found refuge with a nearby abolitionist. She was forced to leave behind her other daughter and son. Not long after her escape, she heard that her son had been illegally sold to a white man in Alabama. She went to court to get him back, and in 1828, she became the first black woman to ever win in court against a white man. Her son Peter successfully returned from the South. He lived with her until 1839, in which he took a job whaling and never returned. Truth converted to Christianity and became Methodist. In 1843, Isabella changed her name and became dedicated to her religion and abolition of slavery. She changed her name to Sojourner Truth. Sojourner because I was to travel up and down the land, showing people their sins and being assigned to them, and truth because I was to declare the truth unto them. She wanted to spread the word of God while also speaking up against slavery. As a deeply religious woman who believed she was on a holy mission against slavery, Truth began traveling and preaching at camp meetings where she addressed anti-slavery and women's rights. She became known as a very strong speaker due to her lectures and it was like to be a slave. Though she couldn't read or write, in 1850, a friend wrote her memoirs titled The Narrative of Sojourner Truth, a Northern Slave. During one of her travels, she was challenged by a male minister who argued women should not have equal rights because Christ was a man. Fueled by such an attack, Truth went to the Ohio Women's Rights Convention in 1851, where she spontaneously gave a speech later titled A Nile Woman, in which she addressed racial and gender inequalities, while also referring to the minister who brought up the argument Christ was a man. Her powerful words uplifted all attending the convention and became a symbol of the movement. As one of the few black women to speak publicly, her speech brought together race and gender, which women of the time tried to avoid, causing truth to be the voice of African American women of the time period. And then that little man in black there, he says, women can't have as much rights as men for Christ wasn't a woman. Where do you think her cries come from? Where do you think her cries come from? From God and a woman. Man has nothing to do with him. The first woman God ever made was strong enough to turn the world upside down all alone. These women together ought to be able to turn it back and get it right side up. And now they're asking to do it, and man better let them. In 1864, she was employed by the National Freedman's Relief Association in Washington, D.C., where she worked to improve working conditions for African Americans. In the same year, she also met with President Abraham Lincoln, bringing together two freedom fighters who connected through their mutual anti-slavery beliefs which wasn't held back by their social, racial, or gender differences. During the Civil War, Truth worked as a nurse and helped to recruit African Americans into the Union Army. At the end of the war, she worked in Virginia to help former slaves find work. She petitioned the Congress in 1870 to grant Western land for free blacks, but her petition was denied, and she met with President Ulysses Grant to discuss the matter. Though slavery was abolished in 1865 and written into the 13th Amendment, African Americans were not seen as equals and continued to fight for their rights. In 1872, Truth attempted to vote in the presidential election, but was turned away at the voting booth. She also rode in streetcars to help force desegregation. In her later years, she also spoke about prison reforms and against capital punishment. Truth died in Battle Creek, Michigan on November 26, 1883. She was buried in Battle Creek's Oak Hill Cemetery alongside her family. Thousands attended her funeral to pay tribute to a leader of the abolition movement and an advocate of women's rights. She lived to see slavery abolished, but died before she could see the ratification of women's suffrage. Sojourner Truth was one of the most famous and influential women of the 19th century and made significant strides in the equality in America. Mm -hmm.